Hello, welcome to Spadget Sims. Today we're going to be renovating this uh, house from the base game. It's the one where Bob and Eliza Pancakes live. Um, in a previous video, I stripped all of it back. So we've just got the walls, the foundations, the floors, um, everything else has pretty much been stripped out. So we're gonna be renovating it today just with the base game. The original is very traditional. Uh, it had a lot of old fashioned kind of furniture, a lot of curtains and that kind of thing. So I'm, my, my main aim, because I'm just doing base game, I want to make it completely different. So um, yeah, here we go, fast forwarding. So I have had to speed up a lot of the video. Um, do let me know if you'd like to see some of it in real time but it took a long time to, to do it all because I'm not used to just using base game. So um, yeah, I wanted to make it really modern. Um, I figured a couple of things weren't working. I couldn't get the stairs back onto the porch uh, kind of area, the deck area. So uh, I had to use the move objects uh, cheat to, to get the stairs back on and move the actual house back a bit. Um, Later on, I actually flipped the house round so the back is at the front, vice versa. Um, I think it suited the style and what I wanted to achieve with the house a bit better. So I'm going for a modern approach using just the base game. So anyone in the, uh, you know who has the Sims game can can download and use this house. So I'm uploading it to the gallery as soon as the videos are, are up and. Well, I'll do it before, actually. I'll do it before. So as soon as you see this video, you'll be able to download this house and use it in your game. There's no custom content. Um, everything will be play tested and, and work fine. Um, so yeah, so the key here is making it modern using the existing shell of the house. So uh, it's quite a, a flat roof that I'm adding on. Um, I just wanted it to be completely different, like as different as possible as I could kind of get it from the original, just to show what can be done, you know, even just with the base game, without any custom content. So I wanted to make it quite clean and I've, I've kind of gone for a monochrome, like quite a lot of white and gray, certainly for the outside glass um, and metal, just to kind of give it that, that kind of really modern look. Um, like I say, I've just, just uh, turned it around, uh, or just in the process, yeah, I've just turned it around now, so the front is at the back and vice versa. Um, I quite liked the idea of having that longer deck area for uh, like an outside patio kind of area, uh, and I figured the front doesn't need so many balconies, um, and like for privacy and stuff. I kind of like to think of realism a bit when I'm making builds, you know, what would I like? You know, I don't want all my balconies to be at the front of the house. Um, you know, it gives you no privacy there. You know, what if you want to sit out on there and read a book or something like that? It's better to be over your back garden. So just having a look at the doors and things. I think at the moment, it's really interesting for me as someone who's been building Sims houses for years, like a lot of years, um, it's really interesting for me going back to a uh, base game um, because it's it's been a long time since I've owned, you know, since not having any expansion packs and things like that. So I'm so familiar with certain windows and doors even that I would use, um, you know, and, and I quite, I'm so used to building like in my style for the type of things that I like. Um, so it's, it's really interesting as a, as a builder and I recommend any of you do it that are like interested in kind of uh, just broadening your horizons in terms of what styles and things like that um, you know it it kind of tr translates over to many areas of your life if you if you try new things and different things that you wouldn't do normally and things that maybe you don't even like it can still open your eyes to other possibilities so it's just really fascinating for me going through this kind of stuff um, so as you can see I've added uh, kind of a lot of glass in there um, I've played around with the foundations. Uh, I thought it'd be quite fun to have the like the decking areas on stilts, um, and ha you know, and, and have just the the core of the house 
um, on a normal foundation in, in the end. Uh, obviously, <laughs> I did a fair bit of playing around before I uh, decided on that. And I wanted to make it quite plain, um, you know, just a quite just kind of pure in a way, I guess, uh, which is why later on I get rid of some of those windows. I think the, the main reason I chose those ones with the smaller rectangles in is that it kind of matches that top pane from the front door. But um, yeah, I, I make it even sort of cleaner and sharper uh, later on, as you will see. Um, so yeah, I'm having to make this in a few parts because it actually took me six hours in the end. As you can see, I've sped this up. This is at four times um, the actual speed that it that it took, and or you know four times the sort of the live recording speed. And I um, also have cut out some things where I was just dithering over stuff for ages. So, for instance, the colour of the floor tiles on the balcony because I wanted white stairs. I really wanted a white flooring that matched that and none of them seemed as bright white. And I was playing around with the sun, uh, you know, the time of day setting um, to, to see what shadows are cast and things like that. I, I get really hung up on some of the details sometimes. So it's not maybe so fun to watch all of that. So I cut that out um, because I spend a good 15 minutes just looking at different floor um again see i'm changing the lighting again to look at this roof because i feel like when it's sunny although it's brighter it casts like a yellow light and i kind of wanted it to you know look good in all lighting as well um so it can take me a while i think if i was making something with like infinite possibilities um I could get stuff that I liked really quickly. And I think that's part of the challenge um, that I kind of enjoy is that you're really constrained by what's available. Uh, at this point, I give up on the white flooring and go for blue, <laughs> um, you know, and I've got that blue trim running around the house. Um, I've changed my mind a lot of times and I, I do this a lot with builds because I have a kind of a vision of how I want it to feel in my head, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's exactly how it's going to, to look like so I have a feeling and I'm just like and then I can look at it and go yep yeah, that's not right or that that is you know and, and when I find the right thing I'm just like yeah I, I, you know I, I really know that it's the right thing now uh, I can I can see what's happening so yeah there's a there's a lot um, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of um, faffing about shall we say with getting the the right colours in and things like that and getting all those windows in and stuff um, but finally finally I'm uh, happy enough with the outside and obviously I just change it about you know as, as I change rooms and things like that um, but at least you can see the process that goes into a build like this um, you know a, a complete sort of renovation I, it's barely recognisable from the original build but it does keep those constraints of you know of that shell so um, putting the stairs in, I, I like to have, uh, you know, a nice hallway entrance with stairs. And I just thought I want to see how much I can incorporate this kind of glass effect. Um, so what I end up doing is, is putting a wall there that I can put a big glass window into um, and then keeping the rest of it open. And I really wanted to add like a fountain under the stairs, which I know sounds a bit like weird, but um bear with me I was just thinking of kind of swanky loft apartment kind of things and and then you get some sort of really modern houses that do you know that are you know a lot of glass and things like that and I'm just thinking yeah I'd really like to have that kind of effect um and you and I don't want I didn't want sims walking straight under and, and into a fountain or whatever anyway I didn't know how it would play out so um yeah so I've got the big chunk of glass there and then when I start building the kitchen in a, in a moment, you'll see, um, yeah, I wasn't sure to start with as well that I wanted a fountain. I was thinking, are there any statues or any kind of art or something that I can put there? And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a really good fountain in the game that's just like a basic round concrete lump, basically. And I, just, I quite like the kind of purity of the concrete, like the kind of simplicity of semi-industrial kind of nature of it. But clean and glass and things um 
So I wanted the kitchen not to be kind of a bland lump because I decided to do a really big kitchen. So I thought I'll choose a strong colour for the cabinets. So I thought that like a turquoisey colour would look quite clean uh, and contrast nicely with the rest of the build um, and decided to make sort of quite a nice kitchen, not a kitchen diner as such, but you know, like a... Um, quite a sort of a family room you know that you could you can live in so as you'll see as I'm putting the kitchen in I've also included like there's a big breakfast bar so the seating around there um there's also a sofa and an armchair um you know so you can get that in there um so I'm just deciding how I want them to be able to come into that. So I decided archways are the best to get into the kitchen. Um, we can close off sort of the rest of the house with doors. I always um, have that in mind. You know, when you're looking at um, open plan living, and I always think of cooking smells. So <laughs> I'm always reluctant to make the kitchen completely open to everywhere because I think what if you were feeling a bit ill that day and someone else in the house was cooking and you're just trying to relax and watch telly or something the last thing you want is their cooking smells and that's always sticks in my mind when I think of these like open plan situations so I'm just putting this tool cupboard in there I quite often do that um to help me see where the uh cabinet line should be um so i can i can see where the where the wall cabinet should be and i think i've squished that into the floor a bit because they look really low to me um but luckily these cabinets don't look horrible at the back because obviously they're going straight onto glass in some of it see there we go uh, <laughs> i've, I've uh, increased the height there of uh, of these cabinets um and obviously as i mess about with what i've got in there then I can, uh, you know, then I shuffle the windows around and that kind of thing. And thankfully, I don't think we need that many windows on the side of this room because we've got full glass on on two sides of it, you know, on the front and the back. So it feels pretty airy and open and, and light in there anyway. I also um, really enjoyed this the wall shape there. I wanted to have a kitchen counter. I've wanted to do this for a while and I've never... I kind of uh, remembered once I started putting a kitchen into to one of my builds. I'm like, oh, I wanted to do that thing where you have one corner in you know, that outside corner and an inside corner, if you know what I mean. So, um, which is quite cool. Um, well, I thought so anyway. Um, so, yeah, I've got this area here. So you've got plenty of space, like worktop space and everything. I do like to think of it in real terms. So I can be like, yep, that's enough space to do all your chopping and, and food prep and that kind of thing. Um, I ended up putting really expensive um, fridge and uh, cooker in. But I mean, we're not being cost conscious with this build. Uh, just really seeing what's possible with the different packs so this whole series you know is going to be a different pack for each one but that's why I'm starting with the base game because I just thought let's just see what's possible with the base game on its own um yeah I figured that the just the plain black and silver uh, appliances kind of <laughs> looked better rather than having a slightly different shade of blue with it um See, I don't know. I think I changed the sink to a silver one, but actually I quite like that black one. It looks cool. Um, yeah, I'm just playing around with different layouts, trying to figure out where to put things. But yeah, I just wanted it to be like a kind of a hub of the home kind of family room. Like I know the, you know, in the original version, it's just Bob and Eliza that, that live here. But it's a massive house, really. You can have you can definitely have a, a whole big family living here so um yeah so i'm just playing around with what i could do with an island with maybe a cooker in and seeing how i could connect that to the rest of the kitchen i tried to use all the different types of wall cupboard and including the, the long cupboard uh well the tall one just you know i just thought it'd be nice to see you know how how many different cupboard types i can include you know just for variation and stuff really um this is quite interesting and uh, yeah trying to work out what ends I can put on and that kind of thing um, I really enjoy putting kitchens together because it's 
you kind of need it to be functional and you want it to look realistic and and some you know something that you could use in real life not just that sims can use and actually kind of make it nice as well uh, really quite like kitchen design I, li I know some some other people also like just love focusing on kitchens um and with the the cottage living now i don't know if anyone's seen anything from the cottage li living expansion that's recently come out just in the last week or two um the kitchen that comes with that is so nice so nice so i can't wait to to get that i haven't bought it yet because there's a lot of stuff that i'm doing at the moment um with my sims generally um i don't need another pack expansion pack to um to think about because i'll get sidetracked because it looks so good it really looks like one of the best ones yet although i said that about dream home decorator and i still absolutely love that i'm massively enjoying playing with that so uh you'll see some of that coming up soon um, I guess when I'm doing a speed build like this, and well, I suppose it is a speed build now because it took me so long that I can't play it in real time. But um, when, you know, stuff like this, it gives me a chance to talk about the other things, the plans I've got for the channel and what other videos you're going to be able to see. Um, at this point, I thought mm, maybe I want to put some black in here or have some windows in black. And I do, I just play around as I, as I go along um, with things because you just don't always know and like I say it's kind of restricted by what there is available um, and you're like oh well given the things that are there this is what I'd like to have you know to to make it look good um, but yeah it's quite nice tinkering around with it so I've, sp I've split this video into into parts um, I don't know whether it's going to be two or three parts um, in all but I just didn't want it to be too long as one video because I thought, you know, you might all get bored. And I can intersperse these videos with like other gameplay videos and things like that. But um, I know some people are really interested. Like I love watching build videos that other people have made. So I want to make this channel bits of kind of something for everyone um, as far as Sims go. Um, because you know I really enjoy the building but I also really enjoy the gameplay of some of the packs and I think that also a lot of um, a lot of channels they focus on a pack when it first comes out and then not much after that and what what's really good with sims what one of the things that I just love is that when a new pack comes out it adds so much functionality to the game as a whole that going back and playing some of those older expansion packs um, that is different to when they first came out because of the new things that you could have with them you know like i've been doing the strangerville storyline just recently and i've got a load of furniture from dream home decorator in there we've had a lot of things happen uh with regards to seasons you know father christmas turned up father winter i always give him the wrong name um but you know it's it makes it really really interesting revisiting these packs i think um and playing through them again and uh and i'm not sure many people do that especially as the sims they've been on fire recently releasing so many new packs um there's so much that's come out recently um at, and it's really exciting stuff so i'm um yeah so i'm going to show you these sort of renovation videos anyway um post these up so you can you can see this build um hopefully it is interesting to you to see how it all comes together um i had some really lovely comments from from the uh strangerville renovation i did prior to starting the let's play for that um i think a few people enjoyed that just to see the process i go through i know a lot of um a lot of simmers also a lot of youtube um people what are they called content creators <laughs> i'm so rubbish sometimes i can't think of the right words um yeah a lot of a lot of content creators and people that play sims they go through a process of like making a shell of a house that looks really nice and then sort of working out the layout inside and the, and the rooms and everything and i've always gone almost the other way i kind of know what i want from my rooms and i know what rooms i want and I, from that, I kind of build the shape of a house. And I think that part of the reason that I take that approach quite often is because 
when I started like a legacy challenge, you're starting off with nothing. And then I'd start with, you know, like a small box of a house and you're building onto it and building onto it. And it kind of, the house shape in the end ends up really nuts, but um, you've made the rooms how you want them. And I found doing it the other way around. Sometimes you're like, how do I shoehorn this weird, like these shaped rooms in? Uh, so I've always kind of done it that other way around. And that's another reason that I really enjoy these challenges and renovating a house because that shell is already there and there's nothing I can do about it. And I can either use the existing layout or like with this one, try a completely different layout. I thought with this house in particular, the original layout, there's so much more that could be done with it. So I think we've gone from a two bed house to a four bed house. Um, I think it was four bedrooms. I think when I finished this, um, I've done it as like three bedrooms, like a master bedroom and then two kids bedrooms. And then the fourth one is like a skill building room, which, you know, if you download this house, you could easily have that as like use it as a spare bedroom or another bedroom for your Sims to live in. So I think you could comfortably have, you know, an eight Sim household here. Um, and there's probably plenty of room to accommodate things for cats and dogs and stuff like that as well. You know, you could really play around and, and get rid of some of the things that I've put in, but some of it's really spacious. Um, and then other things are more cramped and just like almost purely functional. Like when the, when I do the dining room, it's formal dining. So like your Sims can use this to eat all the time. Um, but then the dining room, it's just you know a dining table and there's not much to it it's just like you know another space that they can use um i spent quite a lot of time trying to position bits and pieces on um on these tables and try and get it to kind of look right um in the end i just really didn't like how that um table kind of sat alongside the llama pictures so I ended up getting rid of that one, just putting the backpack in the corner. Um, but yeah, towards the end of this video, so I actually did it in three sittings. Um, so this first section, which just takes us up to finishing the kitchen really, um, was about two hours. And uh, with all the faffing about that I do, but yeah, I just do this outside section here. Um, just put a few things on the balcony and things and finish off placing everything on those tables afterwards because I got annoyed with it. I'm just like, oh, I, got, I, I don't care. I don't care where all the things go. But obviously I do in, <laughs> in time. I'm quite a perfectionist with these things and I want it to look really good. Um, but yeah, I, I don't... Uh, like, I, I don't want to get hung up on things, you know, when there's other more exciting things I can do. And that is another good thing about doing a big house like this. There's always something else exciting that you can do. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, I want to do this bit, that bit. Uh, so you don't necessarily do the house in a logical order. But, um, yeah, we're getting to the end of this video. I'm going to leave it here. Um, if you like the video, do hit the like button and please subscribe if you haven't done already. And um, please leave in the comments anything else that you'd like to see. Um, and, you know, let me know your thoughts. Bye-bye.